Hello everybody, it's Khalif PvP bringing you another Wildstar video. This time we're giving a level 50 Esper build. It's for my 50 melee build. And it's kind of like my primary PvE build. It's really good for PvE as well as my primary arena build. You can check out my arena video linked here. It's a combination of my level 25 build that I did linked here. And essentially it's kind of... Uh, a new upgrade for that build. It's a really fun build to play. It's great in small scale PvP and hopefully you guys will be able to enjoy it and give me feedback as to what can change. So let's talk about runes. Runes are very very important at level 50. They kind of make or break your build. If you're unruned you're gonna get absolutely destroyed. It's a huge huge difference from lobby pvp where you can somewhat survive with rune, without runes but in 50 runes 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 so for the runes and the rune sets we went with devastation and havoc and the reason we picked devastation and havoc is because there's only two other options you can really go uh, with a melee build it's fiendish and onslaught and in my opinion fiendish is useless because it's disabled in pvp your tier 4 and tier 8 uh, skills in fiendish and then onslaught even though you're getting lifesteal you're only getting about two percent so in my opinion picking up havoc and devastation you're getting a much higher increase in other stats whereas um, onslaught only gave you about a two percent increase so for the runes itself havoc and devastation devastation is your crit based uh, rune set so you're getting a lot of crit chance and crit severity and havoc is your multi-hit and crit chance uh, rune set so you're getting multi-hit as well as critical hit chance so from the stat wise if you rune out uh, pretty much we're going six out of six and four out of six in havoc so if you rune out, you're getting about a 23% crit chance and a 21% multi-hit chance. Now in PvP, these numbers are actually going to go up. They're going to go up to about 26 crit chance and about a 24 multi-hit chance. So pretty high. And again, if you went with lifesteal, you're only getting about a 2% increase. For our sets itself, we're going to pretty much go with the multi-hit and the crit hit. Uh, runes for the actual runes itself so not the set bonuses the actual runes itself you're gonna go with the water and fire whenever possible for the fusion runes we're gonna pick up the uh, executioner for the weapon uh, you can actually change this out with siphon if you want but I do have another build that I do for Battlegrounds that I'll post at a later date. Uh, for that particular reason, since I don't have the funds to get two weapons, I go with one. Execution is more than fine if you want to be versatile. Uh, but Siphon is ideally what I would recommend if you're doing just the melee build. For the head slot, we went with Blood Rage. Uh, this is kind of a given. There's no other head slot that's worth our time. Blood Rage is great because it's giving us that extra 2% lifesteal and as you go lower in health your lifesteal goes up so I mean at least the PvP I've done I've rarely dropped below 50% health in the melee build but um, you know if you do drop your lifesteal is gonna pick up for the chest piece we pick up another lifesteal one as well uh, for the chest piece we're gonna pick up uh, full strength uh, the, the stats or at least the like, tooltips actually bugged uh, this is actually their, their stats you'll see um, essentially it's kind of like our, our headpiece as your health gets lower the stats increase for the arms this is actually a really I would say a controversial uh, one I pick up Punisher because um, I have a lot of CC's in this build but a lot of people also want to pick up Shredder I don't know if that's better or not um, I went with Punisher because again I have a lot of CC's and I can pull off the additional damage boost from those cc's uh the feet one there is a fusion slot for the feet i didn't pick it up because i thought the stat boost was much better than what the feet fusion rune was supplying at least the one that you can craft so now on for our amps it's very similar to our level 25 one uh you're gonna go up this lifesteal tree pick up uh, slow it down as well as no remorse and humanity since we do have some extra um, amp points we also pick up the PvP power as well from the assault tree we're just gonna go right up the assault power line 
pick up follow through which gives us uh, an increased assault power uh, when you land a finisher as well as wreckful landing of si five points finisher uh, increase your crit chance and then for the tier three which is actually a really cool uh, skill that we're going to pick up quick response landing a critical hit with a finisher grants a hundred percent chance to reduce your cooldowns by 45 seconds i mean for all intents and purposes we can just say assume reduces cool, uh, cooldowns by 50 percent so it's a really nice skill to have especially with our other skills that will kind of combo in so we also pick up from the utility tree this is actually the most important tree of this build and I think kind of the big differentiator is you're going to go right down this line, pick up uh, Mental Overflow as well as Molasses. Mental Overflow, um, essentially it's just anytime you have over five points, uh, you get a stack of two uh, buffs that when you do a finisher, you get two side points refunded back. Uh, molasses is being CC grants an absorption effect. Um, you can probably switch this off with something else. Uh, like you know, when you become CC, you gain a defense. Uh, this one I would say is not as important as uh, Mental Overflow. For the tier three, we're gonna pick up Fixation. Fixation, great skill that we'll talk about in the skill section. And then for the hybrid line, we're gonna pick up our Crit Tree. Uh, just increase that crit chance, and then go with Crit Hit Severity. Um, you, I really didn't like any of the tier twos or tier threes in here. Uh, I didn't really think anything was special from it. Uh, you know, the big one is no pain, no gain, I guess. Uh, that's not really useful. Uh, tactician, standing still. Again, we're not going to be standing still. Uh, refund, uh, if your finisher is deflected. Uh, I mean, you're building your side points fast anyway, so I wouldn't want it to be refunded. Um, and then finally, no, not snack worthy. Uh, Spectroform gains a assault and support buff for five seconds. Again, Spectroforms is on a thirty second cooldown, so I didn't really want to get it uh, waste. You know, four points just to pick up five second buff. So for that particular reason, this is the setup that we have. I'll post the setup again on uh, on the description so you can kind of see it at a later time. So let's talk about the skills. For our side point builder, we're going to pick up Psychic Frenzy and get it up to T8 so that we can get our ch side charge back at three stacks. Um, and then next, we're going to pick up Fixation uh, at T8 as well. Uh, this gives us pretty much resets all our cooldowns uh, and generates uh, three side points and generates one side point every three seconds for 12 seconds. So again, Huge, huge amount of uh, ability to generate side points. From our finisher, unfortunately, since I don't have uh, 48 ability points, I couldn't get this up to T8. But if you do have 48, this would be tier 8 as well. Since I don't have it, I just have it at least at tier 4 and then dumping whatever extra is left over into it. Um, again, if you have it enough uh, side points, go ahead and get this at T8. The next up, we get Haunt. Um, since I don't have any, you know, have some leftover skills, I'm going to dump it over here. And those are the only skills that are going to be uh, increased uh, past their base. From the Utility tree, we're going to pick up Crush, Incapacitate. If you're doing Arenas, we're going to do Fade Out. If you're not doing Arenas and you want to do this for BGs, uh, I would not advise it. But if you are going to do this for BGs, I would pick up Protected Spirit but switch these off depending on what you're going to be doing. Uh, and then finally, you're going to pick up Restraint from this tree as well. While we're talking about the skills, let's talk about the reason we pick up Mind Burst over TKS and Blade Dance. You know, theoretically, a lot of people swear by the fact that, you know, Blade Dance combined with Illusionary Blades as well as just base T, uh, TKS does more damage than Mind Burst, which is kind of true. But... Uh, let, let's look at you know mind burst versus blade dance first. Um, blade dance a kind of a melee skill, um, and you really really got to be on top of your target a uh, hundred percent of the time to get you know all the benefit from blade dance. And while you're ca it's a channel skill as well. So while you're casting it, you you just you can't do anything. You're just standing there. Um, so for that reason, I didn't like it because a lot of times you know your opponent's just going to jump right out of that. Like, you know, that AOE area, 
I really don't like that skill. In addition to illusionary blades that you gotta constantly keep up as well. For that particular reason, you know, I, I didn't like the fact that, you know, in order to pick up illusionary blades, you gotta give up haunt. Um, and it, essentially you're just making yourself completely susceptible to melee, completely susceptible to CCs. Like if you see an opponent that's really low on health, uh, if you're using the blade dance build, there's nothing you can do um, because you don't have a single range skill. Now, Mind Burst on the other hand with, against Blade Dance, it's, it's a range skill. Yeah, it's going to do less overall damage than Blade Dance, but it has, you know, because it's range, if you see an opponent that's kind of far out, uh, you can just quickly DPS them down. Mind Burst versus TKS, uh, huge, huge I would say discussion around this, you know, TKS does more damage than Mind Burst at full strength. And pretty much if you use TKS in this build, you can pretty much dump two TKSs per, uh, you know, s per cycle, I would say. So it does have a much higher potential for damage. But the issue with TKS is um, the, I would say the telegraph for is really, really hard to pull off in melee. It's really short, whereas uh, Mind Burst is more of a triangle, con like conal shape. Uh, TKS is more of, let me see if I can put it on here. Let's see. TKS is a really s big straight line, as you can see. Whereas, you know, yeah, they have that circle at the end, but in melee range, it's just this line. Whereas if I was to use Mind Burst, let's go ahead and put that back on. Mind Burst is that you know triangle cone. So you have that, it's easier to hit, as well as the big reason I pick up Mind Burst over TKS is all about that spike, right? You want to do a huge amount of quick burst damage. Whereas TKS, any good healer will be able to mitigate much of your damage. So those are the reasons I pick up Mind Burst. Uh, you can play around with the other ones, but I really would not recommend it. So now for the skill rotation. This is kind of a baseline rotation, so you don't please don't you know think that this is what you have always do. Figure out the fight and react accordingly. But with that being said, there's two skills that should be never off of cooldown. It is Haunt, which is a seven second cooldown skill that puts a seven second debuff of magic mitigation. And then Fixation, which is on a 44 second cooldown, but realistically because of our amps, it kind of sits around the 20 second mark. The fight itself, you want to open up the fight with Haunt to get that debuff, followed by Crush. And the reason we do this is most people, especially uh, people that aren't really as familiar with the game or isn't, isn't as experienced in PvP, will usually do their CC break on that crush because crush does last a really long time and they will oftentimes and the fights I've done you know I would say 90% of the time they're going to CC break on that crush because you you know as you're using CC you're going to be on top of them attacking right so at they're going to sign CC break and hopefully if they CC break you can kind of figure it out you know it lasts four seconds and if it seems like the guy got up way faster than four seconds yeah first thing you're going to do is pop your restraint followed by incapacitate and the reason you want to do this is because essentially you have now gotten another stun restraint makes sure that the, the person can't go to their weapon and get it and and kind of taking damage as well so though that's kind of the general first rotation i would kind of break down esper fights in a time slot of 20 seconds each right it's based on the fixation uh, cooldown. So for the first 20 seconds, that's your rotation. And while you're doing that, you know, obviously you're gonna be attacking. And as you're on, you know, as you all, all your CC breaks are on, or CC skills are on cooldown, you should be around the three side point mark. And then you're gonna pop fixation. That's gonna reset all your cooldowns of everything else. In addition to gi give you three extra side points, which will give you your, you know, mind burst finisher. For that. Now keep in mind, if you do pop your cooldowns, you do have a 8 second internal cooldown. So don't, you know, pop your CCs right away, wait for it a bit, you know, use your other skills. Bait them around a little bit and keep like an internal clock of, you know, when your CC breaks are done. And then go ahead on your second iteration of your CCs, what you're going to do is pop 
uh, your root and your incapacitate right away because again if they have CC broken their CC break is on 30 seconds you've already refreshed this much faster so go ahead and pop that and then you have your free crush just waiting around so you can just use that whenever you want to kind of get a get a bigger advantage the big thing about this build is in a 20 second uh, time frame you're pretty much CCing a person for about 12 seconds each of these last four seconds and you're you know 20 second fight over half the fight you're CCing your opponent which is tremendous uh, you know versatility so that pretty much wraps up our build video hopefully you have a good understanding of how the build plays um, you know why I chose the skills I chose etc etc if you do have any suggestions for skills, if you think this can be optimized more, please do leave it on the comment section and I'll definitely try to get to it and kind of see how it plays out. I will be posting a arena video of this, uh, me using this build in arenas. Uh, in the, the watch next section, you can see this build being used in a dueling scenario. So you can kind of see how you know how 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 it plays out in actual real life PvP. I do have have a commentary on it, mistakes I've made, etc. Um, if you do have any suggestions uh, for future videos, please do leave it in the comment section as well. If you have any questions about this build, again, comment section. There's a kind of a a, a general kind of theme. Any questions, suggestions, etc. Comment section. Um, so yeah, next time I'm actually going to do a video of my battleground one, which is a little bit different from the melee ones, more range using Talking Egg Strike, so please stay tuned for that. And until next time, this is Kali PvP. Hope to see you guys in the arenas.